The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Martin. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. So let's check it on out right now. We got the S&P down about three points. We got the Russell up one. NASDAQ's currently down uh, five points on the day. We got the Dow down 47. Oil is down 14 cents on the day with natural gas down at 1%. And corn is down six points on the day. It's a little over a one percent right there. Soybeans up 0.25 flat on the day. Euro dollar down 21 pips. Aussie dollar at five. Pound dollar at 58. Dollar cat is down 19 pips. Dollar franc is down five. Euro yen is down 65 pips with pound yen down 24. US yen down 30. Gold down seven and a half. Silver is currently down about one percent on the day with copper down uh, 0.007, which is about a uh, 20 or 0.2 of you know 20 0.2 of one percent whatever that is 0.22 percent right there on the day and so i get you your current market wrap and where everything is sort of just a whole lot of nothing going on across the board uh we don't really have any major big uh news but let's go into what news we do have and how it has impacted the market we did have the services pmi number come in uh last night on the pound and so i want to pull that chart up for you we can look over that trade and uh, just sort of see how that impacted the market. And I'll pull that one on over here right now. There we go. All right. So now let's go over and look at the pound dollar report. Came out at 4:30, and uh, we had a you know decent amount of volatility. Nothing just you know absolutely major. But let's go ahead and look at that. We had a good little move here. And right at 4.30, so right there. And if we go, we take that to, you know, 7 o'clock is the latest you could have traded it there if you were doing uh, the spreads or binaries. And uh, so you got to move about 52 pips. So pretty small move. Uh, a little, you know, like, so maybe a little bit over 50 pips if we get, like, right down into it. Uh, nothing, you know, major to sort of, I guess you could say, write home about on that one. But uh, the report was actually, you know, decently off of expectations however there's just been so much movement lately that we just didn't get a whole lot but uh, one thing you should notice you should always be aware of is the deviation levels all right so when you're trading these news trades and this is really important when you're trading these news trades be aware of deviation levels because they will become major impediments if they're right around where you know your profit target area and stuff like that because a lot of times it'll stop as you can see Literally, the high of this bar was 53.78, and the deviation level is 1.5378. So to the tick, to the tick, it hit the deviation level and bounced off of it. And uh, that's your biggest clue that, uh, you know what, time to take profit if you haven't already. Or, get you know, if you, I mean, there's a lot of clues. It's moving slow. You're not getting a massive breakout, things like that. But that was your biggest one, and it was right there, like I said, in front of you. And, uh, you know, we usually get a decent move. We were hoping uh, for, you know, a little bit bigger move than that on that report. I'm just trying to pull up the stats for you right now so we can go into the details on it. But uh, on that PMI report, uh, the expectation was 57.4. And really, I was saying, hey, 59.9, we should get a you know, nice solid move. We did get a good you know, solid up move, but it was... Wouldn't major uh, the pound dollar. The average fifty percent of the time it breaks fifty pips. Okay, so we we broke fifty, and the average range from high to low. Now this is another important thing to you know keep into consideration. I talk about these averages from highs to low. You know, low to high. There, if we go in here, we go low. We go right up here, right to the high. Look at that, sixty pips perfect move from high to low so we not only did we break our 50 pips we broke our number and we hit our average range and we were at a deviation level so if you had not taken profit on this trade already everything about that trade said you need to be either tightening your stops or taking profit immediately because you're at the deviation level you've hit your 60 pips and uh, you know one of the things you can do because you have time on this right you can go down you can mark that 
and you can go up and you can go, okay, what's 60 pips from the low? It's moving up. The news is positive for the pound. You know, what's that average move that we're looking for? So just understanding some of this information and making sure you are taking into account the range from high to low, not just the range from, you know, where you got in to where it ended up, okay? But, uh, and then also, of course, looking at the deviation levels as being a very high potential resistance level. You know, we were hoping probably for maybe like 10 more ticks up, but uh, that deviation level became a roadblock. And you can see how it just came right down off of it. Like I said, perfect to the tick. Uh, we can look over. We don't have them on pound yen yet, but we're working on it uh, because we pull them from implied volatility. But we have actually figured out a way to pull them. And so now we're working on implementing that. And uh, we'll have it on a lot of different cross currencies once we uh, put that piece together. But right here, we can see we got to move right on the pound yen, 56 pips. And if we go a high to low, we get a move of 60. And usually it hits 70 pips. So the pound yen actually didn't move. It's uh, it's larger move as expected. It actually was a little bit smaller move, and it pulled back faster. So it got there faster, and then it pulled back a little faster. So not near as good of a move on at the pound yen on that report. And then the uh, the other news that we had come out today, uh, let's go ahead and we'll look at a few different ways to, you know, slice and dice all this. But uh, let's pull up, let's look at the one from this morning. The report that we had came out allowed us to, let's see, take advantage potentially of the ISM non-manufacturing PMI. The number came in at 56, which was a strong number for the U.S. dollar. And um, so we can look at a, you know, a couple different ways that that could be played. So let's go over here and look at it. Did we get even a, a decent move off of this report this morning? No, we really didn't get a great move off of it at all. Uh, the euro dollar is more likely to move than the pound dollar. Pound dollar, if it does move, it can move a lot more. But it already had a large move overnight. And let's look at this. I mean, the market really just did not seem to even care that this number came out. And we can go to the high to the low on that. And, I mean, it was just it was 30 pips. It was abysmal. It was a horrible move. Uh, right there on that report. So we really didn't get anything on it uh, on the pound yen. Let's go look at the pound dollar. Let's check that out. And on the pound dollar, we got a little bit more, but still nothing um, all that fantastic. And we go over here and to the report right there. And I mean, still a very, very small. You know, first 10 minutes, we got a little more than 25 pips if I drag it down there to the bottom. Let's see here. Yeah, like 27. I mean, it didn't really even matter at that point. And then a little bit lower over here. Yeah, so we didn't really hit anything new. Um, and then let's see, put some of these pieces. So that was one of the trades you could do this morning on it. And uh, like I said, it was really just, even though it was a much better than expected uh, movement, we didn't get anything out of it. Um, Canada is on holiday today as well, so that's also going to lower volume a little bit across the board. So just remember that. And let's see, I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Let's check out the euro dollar on that same uh, announcement there. And let's see, still barely anything. So what were the other ways that we could take this trade? Because really right there, there was just nothing, okay? I mean, 20 pips. I mean, that's just, it like just did not hit any of its averages um, across the board at all. So what are some other ways? What are some other things we could have done on this? And so what I want to do is I want to look at and show you the, you know, pre-news announcements. You know, what are some of the things you could do potentially to take advantage of these trades before the news, Okay. Well, uh, if I pull up the stats on this, what I can check out is like say 90 minutes before the PMI comes out. So you have a, you can actually go in and you can do butterflies, you can do binaries, you can do different things like that. And a couple of the least volatile pairs are usually the Aussie dollar and dollar yen. We'll look at those and see you know were they volatile leading up to this report in the morning. And we have a move 89.09. And note it looks large. Um, 88.80. So, what is that? Uh, 20 pips, and then I'm trying to go right up to the high, right before 8908. So, about 28 pips. So, basically, right within that 30 pip range from high to low. And um, so, finished right there, pretty close to the high. And um, so, we did hit the 30 pip range on that one. Dollar yen, or we actually stayed right inside of it. Ideally, we like to see that as a high to low versus a trend. And that would have started right there about 830. But uh, let's look at dollar yen. Let's see how it stayed within the pairs um, range, which was about 30 pips, usually leading up to that. Okay, this one was a little bit more ideal. And so we can see our high to low right here was like 13 pips. So that's a great binary butterfly. And that's I did a lot of these on the FOMC announcement. 
but becoming one of my, I guess you could say one of my favorite news trades to do, simply because uh, they're neutral. I love neutral strategies, and they're they're range bound at neutral, and they're very timing specific. Uh, it's not, I mean, even the news trades, like you're really needing that movement to happen on these. You're like, hey, just stay flat. The news is going to come out in a minute. Hold on. And uh, so while it's waiting on the news, nobody's taking those positions yet. And so without those positions being taken, it sort of leads to a flat market pre-news. And so by pulling up those stats, you can sort of know what a flat market pre-news looks like. And you can put them on like 90 minutes before, 60 minutes before, 30 minutes before. And uh, you can only do them on, you know, well, I, you can actually do them at night. I'll do a, what's called a sort of an iron condor on spread that's a little more advanced. I'm working on putting a feature into the scanner to make that a lot easier. But right now, mainly on like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, you really need ideally ones that expire on the hour um, or have a good expiration time. So, think, you know, if an announcement comes out at 10 a.m. and you can do a range-bound strategy saying it'll stay between, so like this range, this here, this level, and this level down here. You know, before the news. And it does. And so it works out to be a great trade for you. So that's just one of the ways to trade it. And uh, we definitely didn't have a whole lot of volatility. You had a bank holiday that was in your favor. Uh, we, the market, you know, already had plenty of movement previous, uh, you know, with Friday and everything else going on. So even though that wasn't uh, the ADP, or not the ADP, but the NFP, really was not a, a big change. But um, markets didn't really seem to care about the unemployment number that came out. And if anything, they're like, hey, well, that just means that uh, I guess we'll be deferring QE uh, tapering. So, therefore, that's good news. And it's sort of, you know, it's an interesting day and age. Um, when they look at this, the NFP comes in, like, worse than expected. And they're like, okay, that's good. Unemployment rate came in a little better than expected. But since it's a mixed bag of results, it should basically mean that we're not going to have what we need to have for them to justify, um, you know, tapering back QE faster. Therefore, money should keep pumping. Therefore, let's just keep buying into the market. And uh, I, I don't know. It's just like bad news is good, good news is bad. Uh, sometimes bad news is good and good news is good. But it's uh, really interesting just watching all the markets and all the different plays. So with all that, one of the things I love to do on the show, we're going to see if we can find a good one. We do seem to have a little bit of a trend going on over in gold. And so I'm going to check out, see if we find a gold play that might uh, meet some requirements for us to be able to potentially do an expiration premium collection trade. And so let me pull that up on over here. And we'll go in, we'll look at the scanner. Then we're going to go over to the binary scanner. And we'll check out, let's see, you got a 65 to 100. And um, so I'll be looking at that right now. Uh, let's see if we got anything coming right up. Not at the moment. Nothing right now. We'll see if we got something when we come back. Stay right there. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. With the launch of Tiger TV. 
WTFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. All right, folks, we're going back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. So been looking at uh, gold and silver, just not much there. So uh, really no premium collection plays. We want to make sure we have the uh, right trade and have everything in place. And right now there's just nothing showing up. And uh, that's okay. You know, you got to look for a trade. If you got a good trade, you take it. If you don't, you don't force it. And uh, you just let things play out. So right now... Uh, we just look at got gold and silver. We're going to see if anything pops up. Silver is done for the day. Five seconds and counting on down. And uh, we got uh, gold. has got about five minutes left. We'll see if anything pops up if it gets close. One of the things you can do, too, to check and see if anything's getting closer is you can just go in here and, you know, open this up and just see all the ones that exist. And you can see there's like a 6775 right there on the 1301 on gold. So sometimes your uh, parameters are too tight, you can't see anything, and that's okay because it really doesn't meet your qualifications. But if you want to see if there's anything that might potentially come up, that would be the way to do it. Though right now, 1301 is basically you know just a few ticks away. It's a pretty uh, dangerous trade just to hop in on that contract immediately. And uh, but you could go. Let's see. Now it's about $75, so that's not too bad. You got uh, six six ticks. Looks like going in and. Uh, you can re-put that filter back in. It ought to show up at this point based on that price level. And so it pops right in there. And we actually added a little uh, thing right there so you can actually see if it's a live or a demo account 
um, on your ticket when you submit that in. So that looks like that's our trade, though. 1301, not too shabby. And um, again, you can do this in live or demo. To switch to demo, you'll just click the demo right there. And then you can click on the same ticket, pulls it back up, and notice how it says demo account. And uh, as soon as the price populates, you just hit the contract, hit place order, and then it'll fill that in for you as well. So a uh, pretty simple thing uh, to pull off and do. And let me go ahead and get my little other ones in there. But uh, And the most important thing on this one, as always, if you are going to follow along on these kinds of trades, make sure, one, you demo them until you understand them. Two, never risk too much. Number three, always exit if it hits your strike. Okay? Again, always exit if it hits your strike because that limits your risk and it actually makes it a decent risk-reward trade. If you don't go in and do that, then um, you're really asking uh, to have multiple, really, you're actually going to have a lot of uh, bad money management issues uh, because you'll blow your account out really fast. And uh, these trades move pretty fast, so you don't want to um, you know, be stuck on the wrong side of them. Now, you can also go in and you can set a take profit order. Okay, so let's say you get in the trade, it's going, you want to flip around, get out of the trade. If, say, it moves up, Okay, um, like right now, gold is moving up a little bit for us, which is good. Um, then you can set a take profit order to get out, and you think it had already been filled. Like it looks like it went up to about 96 right there um, on the platform. So you actually could have already taken your profit if you haven't done so already. And so uh, it's good just to have those in, but to do that, just go in and set a right here. It says uh, at right here. There's a little bit thing that says close at market. So you can click that, and then what you do, so if you're selling this contract out, so now we are in the final two minutes before expiration, but you could have went in and set your uh, take profit at 96 to sell. You hit place order, okay? And then what that would do is I'd put the order in the market, and that way you're basically putting in an order and it's working for you to take care of it. And uh, don't even really pay attention to the P&L like in the last two minutes because the market makers stop quoting and so you'll get information that uh, looks misleading like you may see like oh I'm down all this money and it's probably just somebody else has some weird uh, ticket in there they're trying to take profit somehow whatever and uh, so like, I can open this ticket up and I can just look and see if there's some because somebody has a, an order in there for $18 on this thing and uh, looks like to sell 1301 so um, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but they're trying to buy it for 18 bucks. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to go in and buy the contract 10 points below the market for $18, and uh, see if somebody's uh, sucker enough, I guess, to take it. But uh, definitely would not be interested in taking it in that trade. And so there's a lot of different things you can do. You can play with the scanner. You can come up with all sorts of different trades and a variety of trades that you can take advantage of. Let's see, looking over here, trying to see. Yeah, we got nothing going on. Also, I uh, have a couple of tips for you. These are some of the most commonly, um, you know, I'll go through common, some common mistakes on the banner uh, that people make. But um, so far, so good. Looks like all 10 of those are going to expire in the money. So we'll be right back here in just a couple minutes. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors.
With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. With over three decades of commodity trading experience, Andy Hecht has developed a system that combines both technicals and fundamentals. He calls this approach Technomental, and now you can put it to work for yourself with his brand new service, the Technomental Commodity Report. In this weekly newsletter, which comes out each Thursday morning, Andy gives you his analysis of the market price direction bias using fundamentals, and then specific trade recommendations including entry and exit points using technicals. The recommendations in the newsletter are always based on stocks and ETFs, so a futures account is not required, and Andy will often use options in the recommendations as well. Andy will tell you where to get in, where to get out, and he'll outline the risk-reward profile for all recommendations. To get your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht while locking in the low introductory rate, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, we're going back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. So our gold contract expired in the money, so we took that profit on that one right there. Went ahead and expired at a uh, full profit. And worked well. We just had to make sure it stayed above uh, 1301, and it did. So not bad for uh, simply five uh, minutes of work. Let's uh, check out what else we got going on this week. Some things that you need to be aware of. Okay. Well, tonight uh, we're gonna have Aussie dollar report come out. Uh, let's see. We got the trade balance, the job advertisements, the HPI. These are not major. Announcements, unless they're majorly off. Um, therefore, you should expect a little bit of volatility. You should probably get about maybe a 20 or 30 pip move in the Aussie dollar. And most, unless you're just seeing some massive rapid move, call it a night. Uh, but that would give you a nice, easy trade right there tonight at 9.30. Let's see here. Tomorrow morning, uh, we're going to have the USD and the CAD are both having their trade balance report coming out at 8.30. So uh, probably get an easy 20 to 40 pip move on the dollar CAD. Uh, that's about it until we roll on into Wednesday. Australia's going to have their interest rate announcement. We'll talk about that plan tomorrow, about how we can put uh, some different trades together. It's going to come out at 12.30 a.m. And then we'll go in and we'll have the Canada IVPMI report. We'll be coming out at 10 a.m. on Wednesday. We'll also put that trade plan together for you tomorrow. And then uh, the Australia employment change. Um, is also going to be coming out. So a lot of Aussie announcements coming out at 9.30. 
And uh, uh, that is a tradable plan, so we'll put that one in there. And let's see, what else do we have? Of course, you got weekly inventories coming out at 1030 on Wednesday. you got natural gas inventories on Thursday. And then we're going to have the U.S. unemployment claims. They're going to be coming out uh, as well. Let's see, that comes out on the 8th at 830. So, uh, you know, not usually just a massive mover unless it's massively off, like I said. But that's about a 20 to 30 pip move on like a dollar, really any dollar pair, dollar yen, dollar franc, euro dollar. Uh, and then let's see here. We'll have the crop progress reports that come out in the evening. And then uh, 9.30 in the morning, we'll have the uh, Canada employment change will be coming out. So that's sort of their big, you know, employment number. And so I'll have that uh, prep ready for you on Thursday. That comes out at 9.30 in the morning on Friday. So we'll, uh, put, we'll put together some plans and some pieces and uh, get together, you know, ways that you can trade these reports. So that way you can go in and start taking advantage of the Nanix Exchange. Uh, like I said, it's one of the coolest ways to trade news. Because I mean, usually you try to avoid news. You're afraid of news. Don't trade into the number, that type of thing. Um, but if you can go in and you can be non-directional, like before, like the binaries, the butterflies. Uh, and people, you know, they hear about these binaries and they're either they've heard stuff about bucket shops or they just have, they've been misinformed. And, you know, they're ah, binaries are gambling. You know, it's like, well, I mean, all trading is gambling if you gamble. <laughs> so, you know, but I talk to, you know, I talk to people, I'm like, well, if you look at, like, somebody like Phil Helmuth, you know, is he a gambler? I guess you could say he is, but he's won, you know, more World Series Poker Championships than anybody. I don't think he did that on luck. That's, I mean, come on. You know, you don't win, I don't know, what, eight, nine, ten, I don't know how many get the guys won now. On luck, No. He is a professional. Why is he a professional? Because he knows his statistics. All right? He knows the odds of probability of each play that he makes. He has money management in there. He knows how to read his opponent. He knows how to read the market in which he's playing. Gamble is the guy who comes in on the weekend is like, man, I think this is just for fun. If they serve free drinks, I'll think I'll put down some money and see how this goes because I play with my friends. You know, back at home, and I do pretty good against them. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty good at this. And I got this system that I, you know, I learned from a, a friend and my buddy on the craps table, and it really works well. And they're gambling, they're having fun. You know, and they may make a lot of money, and uh, it's very emotional too. Extremely now, Phil, of course, he's he's a little, you know, tyrannical, emotional. He's a little funny to watch, but <coughs> more of the anger side than the joyous side. But, um, anyways. You go in and you look at it, and it's, I mean, the professional versus gambler. Stats, money management, you know, knowing how to read the opponent, knowing the game inside and out, whatever it is, is really what helps distinguish gambling from, you know, being a professional in a, you know, any kind of money filled, whether it be cards or stocks or options or futures or binaries or spreads. Now, are there binaries that are gambling? Yes. Uh, they're binaries that you go in and these are, these are these bucket shop binaries, these non-CFTC regulated binaries. And you go in there and basically they're over under bets. Like in the next five minutes, five seconds, five hours, it'll be greater than or less than this and there's nothing you can do about it. And by the way, if it's greater than, you know, you win 75% of what you put up. If it's less than, then you lose everything. People go, isn't that similar to the EPC trades? And I'm like, well, no, because I'm saying it'll be greater than a price that it's already, the price is already greater than that. Okay? I'm saying, like, it'll be greater than 1701 and the price is already at 1702. So I'm already right. If nothing happens, I'm profitable. If it goes up, I'm profitable. If it goes down some, I'm profitable. Okay? Uh, these over under bets are where the price is right now, it'll still be, it'll be greater than that or less than that in the next minutes, hours, days, weeks. And once you hit the button, you're in until then. There's nothing you can do. There's no problem. It's a 50-50 with a less than one-to-one risk-reward payout, which makes no sense. If your probability is not increased by you already being in the money, you should not get a decrease in your payout. Uh, And then, of course, just the risk of having your money overseas in Cyprus and all these other weird countries and things like that. Uh, Not be able to exit. Therefore, you're not really trading. If you can get in, but you can't get out... You're not really trading. Trading is the ability to enter and exit a market. 
Um, you're getting in with the hope it'll still be somewhere at a certain time, which is not the best way to trade these. Um, if you are doing something like that, it needs to be because it's already there and it doesn't have to get somewhere, move somewhere, do anything. It can even move against you. you know, it's all about is that probability in your favor or are you at a coin toss? Because if you're at the money and you have no exit plan and no ability to edit your trade, then you're just doing a coin toss. If you have the ability to get out early at a profit or at a loss, if you have the ability to you know, manage the trade, then it's trading. And then is it professional trading? Well, are you using stats and money management and a trading system, knowing how to read the market or using those things in your favor? So it's really just putting a lot of these little pieces together and um, learning what the differences are to understand what a gambler is and a trader is. And a Forex trader is no more or less a gambler than a binary trader, than a futures trader, or than a stock trader. Um, it's simply... Do they know what they're doing, and are they using the right instrument to do it? Because you can do any of these things on stocks, futures, forex. There's, there's all sorts of weird, exotic instruments out there. Um, you just have to see, is there an edge with that instrument? So, And what is that edge? And to me, it's defined risk. It's I can put probabilities in my favor from, from entry, from the go. From the word go, I can put probabilities in my favor. And I have the ability to exit to manage my risk. So if I can do that and do a little bit of technical analysis with it, that's a that's a pretty good combination, and it seems to work out pretty well. But um, anyway, there's a lot of things out there. I got I got another question that came in recently on the box spreads. I want to go ahead and answer on air. Um, pretty simple, and we'll go into some of the uh, the errors that are used on the scanner here in a minute too as well. I talked about that, and let me reset my filters here. And one of the questions that came in I said, "Hey, I'm watching all these videos. I'm learning about how the spreads work." And my question is, if I buy a spread, say like on the S&P 500, okay, and it expires outside of the box, as I call it, all right, and the reason I call it a box is because if you draw it on a chart from like, say, where you enter with the bottom of the box being 1695, say the bottom of the box being... Uh, let's see, let's find uh, an actual one we trade here. Okay, 1700, the bottom of the box, 1710 being the top of the box. Okay, and then the right side of the box is 3 o'clock, and the left side of the box is the time you got in. So that's your box, okay? So 1700, 1710 prices, and then 3 o'clock, and then current time is the right and left side of the box. So you got that box on the screen. And they go, if it expires outside the box, can I still make money? Yes, definitely. So you go in and you buy the S&P 500, okay, box spread, the U.S. 500, and you put up about 20 bucks in risk. Um, if it goes and it expires at, say, 17.15, the S&P just takes off, then, yeah, you'll actually make max profit. So it's nothing. it's nothing that has to be inside the spread, okay? It's just it caps out at the top of the spread. So, of course, I don't think too many of us would be upset about making eight points on the S&P. You can do five of these and be back making $400. And uh, that's just here in the next couple hours. There's also 30-point wide ones and 40-point wide ones and 80-point wide ones. Um, and you can also buy another one if you have max it out. I've done that before. I roll over and I just buy another one, and it's higher because they keep adding more and more and more every hour. So, yeah, it can expire outside the box. So if you buy it and it expires above the ceiling, you'll get maximum payout. If, it expi- if you sell it and it expires below the floor, you'll get maximum payout. So... The cool thing is, though, is if it expire, if you buy it and it expires below the floor, you have capped risk, and you don't have to get out of your trade. Uh, so if you bought a sort of a volatility-based trade, um, and it may even not even be a complete volatility-based trade, maybe you're just buying, and you think the S&P is going to go up, and you don't want to risk more than 100 bucks on the trade. Well, that's a two-point stop loss. That's not that big. And so you could go in, and you could actually put on this trade to buy the 1700 to 1710 um, trade on the S&P right now. And you can do that, and that's basically, that would be your trade. And uh, it would allow you to, like I said, risk a very small amount of money. Uh, you go in and it says 1702. Now, one thing is people look at this and they'll see like 10. And you got to remember, on the S&P, it ticks in 0. 0.1. Okay? So that's really only, like 10 ticks is only one point. So you're buying this at 1702. The S&P is sitting right now at 1701. All right? Um, and it's like having a stop loss at 1700. Okay, or you could say 1699 if you want to equalize the risk. So it's like having a two-point stop loss on your S&P 500 trade. That's not that big of a stop loss. And the cool thing is, though, you stay in this trade and you can hold on to it till expiration. Uh, you don't have to get kicked out. Now, 
It will expire at three. You have about an hour and a half, so the SP is going to have to move if it just stays quiet. You know, you could make a little, lose a little, you know, whatever. Um, if it expired, you know, below 1700 the most you'd lose would be 100 bucks. But you'd basically lose about that amount anyway if you were holding on to the S&P. Um, and then if it, you know, stays flat, let's say 1701, you'd lose 50, you'd get 50 back. If it expired, went up to 1702 and just expired there, you'd get all $100 back. If it went up to 1705, then you'd get, you know, 150 bucks back plus your other $100, you get like 250 back. If it went all the way up to 1710, then you would actually get all of the money back. Then you put up the $100 plus, you'd make 900 bucks. If it went up even higher, you'd make even more. So, uh, well, no, you wouldn't make any more. You'd be capped. You'd make a nine, what would it be nine hundred dollars, I guess. We put a hundred bucks up. So, um, but you go in there and you do the trades, and so you can cap out the profit on the trades. Not a big deal. And some people go, well, I don't want to cap out my profits. Fine. And if you don't want to cap out your profits, and we're working on doing a head scanner for this, uh, but you can go in and you could buy the S and P and you can sell a spread to hedge it. So there's a lot of different ways you can do it. And what I'll do is I'll get rid of this at the market. And I'll put on here, you know, $100. Then I'll put one. And this is one of my favorite strategies. I want to buy. I don't want to have a lot of risk. So this right here, 23 uh, ticks to break even. Basically, that's my difference um, where it's at. So it'd be like 2.3 uh, points on the S&P. All right. And... Uh, so basically, you're talking 150 bucks of risk on the S&P, and I can have unlimited upside potential. And I don't have to go very far to make that money back because we're only talking making back like ten dollars, so fifty dollar. If I bought five of them, fifty bucks. So at less than a point, really, I would be profitable, covered the cost of my spread. It can go up infinitely, and I can make money on the trade. So without having any cap on my risk. So there's more than one way to trade the spreads. There's more than one way to trade the binaries. It's not just buy or sell. Um, and there's a right and a wrong reason to do a different trade. You know, if I'm selling and I want to make money going short, I probably don't want to sell that spread. It has to move 23 ticks. Even though my risk is only like $9, it has to move, you know, two and a half points before I make anything back. So that probably isn't the trade I want to do. But if I'm buying the S&P 500 E-mini future and I want to hedge, that's a great contract. That's only a two, two and a half point stop loss. That's not a big deal for any S&P trader. And now I have a limited upside potential. And as soon as I can move, trail my stop, if I can trail my stop by 3 o'clock, I don't even have to worry about the spread as a hedge anymore because I'm just trailing it anyway. I don't even need a hedge because I'm trailing my stop. You know, I'm protecting my profits. So there's a lot of cool ways to use these spreads. You, gotta get, you don't even have to get but you get a little bit creative. You start looking at what's the right way to do this. And that's, of course, where I can help you out if you call another show. Um, or if you submit anything in the you know the question area in the back office there, I'll be glad to help you out and put different pieces together. Now, number uh, some things errors that people will make um, is they'll go in here on the uh, scanner and they'll forget they have simulation settings. And sometimes they'll have like a risk reward on here. So let me uh, <coughs> reset that and see that they'll forget they have like if you put one to one or two to one or whatever, it'll filter stuff out. And so you want to make sure you do reset your simulation prices, okay, when you're done using it. And uh, I'll talk about a couple other basic mistakes people make on the scanner just to help you out so you don't make them. They're really simple. They're really easy. But uh, people do make the mistakes now and then and to help you out. All right. Stay right there. We'll be right back after this break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. 
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. So, going over to some common mistakes that people will make uh, when they're doing things like this. So, like, one of them is they'll go in and they'll go, okay, I want to do premium collection. So, they'll enter, like, 65 to 95, okay? And then, once they've done that, then they'll go into the uh, risk-reward ratio and they'll put a 1. What is the problem with this? Well, if you're risking, at the maximum value is $100, okay, and you're risking $65, the most you can make on the trade would be $35. Therefore, it is impossible to have a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. So basically, they have guaranteed that nothing will show up uh, whenever they open up that market to try to find something. Everything will be filtered out. So simply, 
erase the one to one. It doesn't mean you're maybe not going to do a one to one trade. Like you put a zero right there, okay? It doesn't mean you're not going to do a one to one trade. It just means that that is not a one to one trade. Uh, so as far as the maximum risk, okay, the maximum potential risk on the trade. So you'll do you do want to make sure that you don't like out filter yourself okay like put a filter that makes another filter impossible uh, so you can have everything on there but if you say i only want stuff that expires in the next five minutes and there's no expirations in the next five minutes then nothing will show up if there is great it'll show it so uh that's another thing so people will have the uh, expiration time too small if they'll go in at night when there's only like on the binaries now on spreads there's like an expiration like every hour oh my god they start at six and then like at eight nine ten eleven i mean all the way till three o'clock but on the binaries, there's like a 7 o'clock, and then an 11 o'clock, and then a 7 a.m. So if you go in at, let's say, 7.30, and you put in a one-hour till expiration, you're not going to see anything until you get to 10 o'clock, because one-hour till expiration. So, you know, just uh, what I tell people to do is, if they don't see anything showing up, the easiest solution is just click Reset Filters. Resets everything back to the maximum view. And then one at a time, okay? Go in and put like say sixty-five. And then go down. Okay, that narrows stuff down. And then you can go in and you can put say ninety-five. Alright. So that narrows it down a little bit more. And then you could say, okay, I only want to buy. Okay, that gets rid of your cells. And then now this is important, notice this. Now I can say I only want stuff that expires in the next, you know five minutes. Now nothing's showing up. But if I say both, there is one that's going to expire. Uh, a buy and a sell. There's, so there's a sell that expires in the next five minutes, like on the S&P 500. Okay? So there's a lot of different ways that you can trade these. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can use this to be able to place these trades. And this is just one of the many ways that you can do it. But, uh, Always just reset your filters. It's the easiest way to go in and do trades on the markets, uh, and the easiest way to make to use Nadex. Period. Because if you're trying to go in and use their platform, you're going to have quite a few challenges uh, just to try to sort through everything that's out there and put the pieces together. So hopefully this uh, will help you avoid some of the common mistakes. Just uh, like I said, just go back and reset your filters. Uh, make it really simple, and you shouldn't have any problem right there and uh, putting those trades on. So, uh, let's see, I'm trying to go through some other examples for you to help you out. And I guess just to wrap up here, we only got a couple minutes left on the show. Let's go ahead and look at a couple, uh, there we go. I knew it was wrapping up, I was like, we can go through some deviations, but um, anyways, a couple tips for you, different ways to look at news, and uh, we'll come up with some more news plans for you this week, so uh, tune in tomorrow. And we'll um, start laying out some of the... Uh, there's a lot of reports coming out Wednesday that we can take advantage of, so we'll talk about those tomorrow. Stay tuned. We have another great show coming up for you, and uh, you'll have a great day. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to mastering probability today, because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.